bunker time, updated Mini 14 review time, tactical doodle, ladies and gentlemen. And guess what we're going to concentrate on now with the Mini 14? It's going to take you by surprise, just a little bit. We're going to concentrate on second cool of the Mini 14. It's not something you see together too often. Nope. In fact, I think the Mini 14 platform is turning a corner right now, within the last year. Because here's what's happening. A lot of us gun guys, like myself, started out with a Mini 14. We had a very young family. We didn't have a lot of money. Maybe it was in the late 80s, the early 90s, maybe the early 2000s. And what was our choice of weapon? A little Mini. A little mini. Hopefully with the bitchin' folding stock. Oh, that was cool. Show him that one. Super cool. So he searched out this on auction Mini 14 GB. It's basically a semi-auto AC556. Freaking cool. Freaking cool. And so maybe this was your Mini 14 of choice. If you could afford this one. There you go. So guys chose that. They ran it as their tactical carbine of choice. Maybe like me, they were a poor college student with a young family. So if you were to go back to the early 90s when TD, this tactical doodle, my son, when he's a little baby, what was guarding our family? I think it was this exact gun right here. With that awesome stock. <laughs> this, well, I think I had a choke folder and I showed you that on my original Mini 14 review like in 2008 here in TMP. This is actually a Butler Creek folder that I got in the 90s. It's fantastic. I've taped it with electrical tape. It's got the finger groove stock. I really like that, actually. I wish I could get an AR it grip has, like that because it fits my hand so well. has a storage compartment in it, too. Ooh. And I think it has a transistor, transistor radio built in the forearm. Got some old Skittles in the storage, oh, That's too. cool. Really nice lockup. But this uh, later, this was added later, this Butler Creek. The I forget exactly. The stock to prepare for Y2K. <laughs> When the water shortage begins <laughs> and the technocrats begin their inevitable march. <laughs> the or the no, it's the techno barbarians. <laughs> oh, to join the so sons funny. of Horus. I did rely on the Mini 14 system, and I always talk systems. We talk systems here in TMP for years it, because it was cost effective, it worked. It's basically an M1A shrunk down to a 556 piston driven gun. Uh, and we actually, as a family, the Nut and Fancy clan, we made a lot of memories with the Mini. It was a defensive choice for sure. We shot it as a family a lot. I trained him up on it. He wasn't even a gun guy until I put a Mini 14 in his hand. He was, and I don't even know if you remember this, you were scared of an AR. You were scared of the M1A, I tried to have you shoot that. You're like, no, 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 AR, so you were scared. He was like a kid, like eight, nine, I forget. I put a Mini 14 in your hand and something clicked. It might have been this exact one, like I was saying. This one right here. Then it clicked. That's a family memory right there. So what this video is going to tell you about, uh, and it might be the first ever of its kind, is that the Mini 14 is going to go up in value. These older ones. That's that's what I predict happening. We've seen it with other platforms, haven't we? Yeah. Nostalgia starts to set in. And people go away from, well, it doesn't function. It's not as competitive. It's not that accurate. I mean, in all fairness, the Mini is something that combines the awesome 2MOA accuracy of an AK. Well, the modern ones have 2MOA. As you're going to see, the older ones have like 4 or 5 MOA. They're horrible. It's got the battery of arms of an AK. Everyone loves those. They love the Never have minded on that. the right. Never. And the price <laughs> of, uh, what even is it? It's price bracket. It's A lot of guns are. But we'll talk about prices as the video progresses. This will be kind of a re-review of the Mini 14, kind of, sort of. We're not going to go through all the details. I've done like five Mini 14 reviews over the years here on TMP. It still is a favorite platform of ours. Uh, TMPers to this day, TMP Patreon members to this day are asking more Mini 14 stuff. Uh, honestly, uh, even though we've had those calls to do that, this is coming from our own heart. This is coming from uh, us discussing of us predicting and kind of seeing what is already happening to the Mini 14 market, I want to get the word out that it's turning a corner, that 
there are people like us that were raised with Mini 14s that use it as, again, a go-to WROL rifle, maybe a patrol carbine as a sheriff, a yeah. rural sheriff or something. I think there are a lot of departments out there that still use them. Agree. I think Bermuda still uses prisons them. Prisons use too. them. A lot of prisons yeah. use them. And uh, what you're going to see is the values of these guns are going to go up. And so what you want to probably start doing is keeping your eyeballs peeled for a good deal used Mini 14. And an old school, not a modern 580 series where we have the thicker barrel, the supposed 2MOA accuracy. I've made videos on this. Those are great. And we have one right here, show them our Mini 14 Tactical. So we do have three in inventory. We have sold some. We don't have all the ones we used to have, like that super cool Dura-coated Tactical. I sold that to a TMP. -er. Here's a Mini 14 Tactical. It's got a Checkmate muzzle device on it. This is, I think, a probably a Choate fixed stock on this one, synthetic stock. So this is still wearing our Tasco Pro Point, <laughs> which is nice because Classic. it would span those rings. Yeah. And this is not a drilled and tapped receiver, uh, tapped receiver like you see in modern Mini 14 Tacticals. Actually, all of them have that now. And I think most, most if not all of them, come with a pick rail and also still one inch steel scope rings. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking rings. A, man. Well, why don't they make them of 7,000 series aluminum? I've always said that about minis. Rant, nothing fancy. Okay, there's your rant. But anyways, here's a, here's a, a you know, a modern day product improved Mini 14. These are still great, but I don't think these are going to go up in value for a while. Yeah, it'll be a while. This is a first cool gun, so it's a product improved Mini 14. What guys are looking for and what guys are going to buy, maybe I'm completely wrong, maybe we're completely wrong is this type of gun. And this is a 1992 stainless steel and wood 188 series Mini 14. <clears throat> 92 to like 94, I don't know the exact date. This is what's gonna appeal to a lot of dudes. And here's why, this is gonna be an interesting point because if you look at this in terms of first cool, it falls short, doesn't it? Of course. It's got a skinny, you know, straight barrel that is famous for its uh, barrel whip. So it's, as you're going to see on paper, not that accurate. It doesn't have a threaded barrel on it. There's no M1913 handguard on it. <laughs> no quad rail. There's no quad rail. There's no M lock. There's no key mod. It's got a sling swivel that's rattling around up there. It's got a wood stock. It only has two scope rings in this version. <laughs> Which was an advancement, by the yeah, way. Yeah, back then that was nice. But forget about Picatinny Rail, it's not there. This is a ranch version, so it has the modified ejection pattern. The earlier Mini 14s didn't have it, and they did that so the brass would not hit the scope. Oh, that's did cool. you know that? Uh -uh. That's what a ranch version is. But all the Mini 14s nowadays use that ejection pattern, according to my understanding. Has a rock and lock magazine on it, which some people don't like. I've never minded it. Have you? I hate it. You do? Yeah, because it's really? easy to screw up when you're under it stress. It is easy to screw up. It's the same as an AK, though. Yeah. AK uses the same thing. This one's a little bit tougher, though, because you have the hole, but you don't have the notch. Because AKs, as True. long as you space that notch out right, you can bang it out. Right. But what you're seeing, then, in these older Mini 14s is that in terms of a modern tactical carbine, like we see right here, ladies and gentlemen, back here, one of our AR-15 builds, it falls short. Well short, but, but here's the rub. Guys like you watching this video already have a lot of modern advanced tactical carbines. So when you go out and buy a really clean stainless steel, you know, mini 14 GB, uh, a ranch rifle, an older school ranch rifle like this, are you really buying it? for maximum accuracy. Is it going to be your go-to war platform? No. Like TD said, you're going to be buying it for nostalgia, for second cool. And you're going to go back to that charm that is still there with the Mini 14 product. It really is. But it's kind of there, at least for me, more in these older school ones where they're light, they're handy, they're under seven pounds. They have that beautiful wood on them. The stainless is almost like a bead blasted stainless. I mean, look at this one. It's reminiscent of their ancestors that 
M1 carbine. I know it is. they were modeled after them, so they are right. really their ancestors. But right. They were cloned to M1 look A like there, them. there, or do we put it up? Yeah, M1 Grand's right there. A's right here. Yeah, show them the M. So we have an M1A in the bunker here. Which so is it's cool. a miniaturized version of this. So this, it, in, this is a good parallel. Is this the best 308 battle rifle currently being made? No. Nope. Not by a mile. But, and yet we still have it. Surely capable. I said that in the reviews of the M1A. It is a hard hitting 308 battle rifle still to this day, but it's heavier. It's more difficult to put optics on. This is a Cava mount on here, which actually works great. Adds weight though, adds, adds complexity, but dang, does it look cool. <laughs> dang, does it have a history. And so the Mini 14 really captures the aura and the presence of the M1A, the M14, don't you think? It makes it a lot more affordable to shoot. I mean, here's daddy, here's the son. Oh, by the way, here's the son, here's the daddy. <laughs> it's true though. So we're talking second cool. So when a guy goes out and buys a Mini 14, he's tapping into that, the second cool, the M14 series, I know, M1A, better said. Uh, and they're not really looking for it to be their go-to-war gun. Now, let's go back to first cool just a little bit on the Mini 14. It is still very capable, right? We're not talking that this thing is all, you know, like a Mini 14 is garbage. No, within an engagement range of 100 yards, a Mini 14 will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most AR-15s. And it is pretty reliable. Outstanding, outstandingly reliable with factory mags. Here's a factory 20. And I bought this one. Look, here's the freaking box it came in. I bought this... I don't know, late 90s probably. It's been in storage ever since. These factory 20s are phenomenal. And this one's wearing a factory 30 right here, dudes. Awesome. I think that's a factory Ruger one. It is. It's got the Ruger emblem on there. You want to be careful not to use these. I bought this Pro Mag. This is crap. From back so in the day. I was in the desert the other day shooting this exact gun and the Pro Mag was choking. I basically just threw it away. Um, uh, this is a therm thermal. Those are actually pretty good. Mini 14. You might have to sand the lips on them depending on where your bolt rides on it. These are great. I've reviewed and talked about the Tapco Mini 14 Max. Those are fantastic if you use brass ammunition. I don't think they like steel case ammunition that well. But the reliability, we're going back to first cool and talking about, yeah, it's really cool, but it's also pretty capable. And I think it was like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I did a barricade review. It was when I had a bad cold. And I basically made a video along those lines. Is the Mini 14 still a tactical or a valid tactical carbine choice? And the answer is a resounding yes, it is. As long as you can accept its limitations of which we just went over. No threaded barrel, no M1913 pick rail, difficult to mount op optics to. I'm talking old school Mini 14s. Yeah. It's a little easier with modern ones, especially that gaudy, what is it? The, 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 the ATI stock one, did you yeah. see that? That the is Archangel so or something ugly. Like no, it's an ATI, I don't think it's an it's Archangel. It's Ugums. It's SKU 5846 and it, it's 7.2 pounds and it, it retails for like almost $1,200. There's no second cool there. and. It, honestly, it's limited first cool on that. But as far as first cool, and if you guys don't know the language of TMP, first cool is capability. Does it do its job? Second cool is it's just fun. It's just cool. The Mini 14, especially these older ones, practically speaking, will get it done. We'll get it done. Now, I'm, a, I'm an accuracy snob, right? I like accurate guns. But with the Mini 14, when we talk about second cool, we're talking about collectability, going back to, I don't know, M1A, M14, our own family use of the gun. We're going to give it a pass because, again, I don't think we're going to be going to that trough to get accuracy. We have other guns to do that job. Probably you, an AR. Probably an AR, just like this. You probably have like five of these. This is your go-to-war gun. If you have to, in a pinch, the Mini 14 will rock and roll. It's good to have in reserve. Yeah. In case you have legal issues or something and you need something with no threaded barrel, or <laughs> something that looks less harmless. It really doesn't look nearly as scary. That's as an, an advantage AR, which of is the mini awesome. system, by the way. Yeah. That it is less intimidating. It's legal longer, as mm -hmm. I always like to say. A lot of times it'll 
like ARs and all guns that are black and they have all these features. It's so grip. Right. And all the protectionists. Oh my gosh, it's got a threaded barrel. The Mini 14 looks like you're going to go out and maybe shoot a skunk or something. You know, so it is pretty low key and that's an advantage. Doesn't freak out the neighborhood watch. Right. So you could still put it in service as a patrol carbine, whatever. And then it has all that other first cool stuff we love about it. It's a piston gun, one of the very first piston guns, if you still care about that. Takes the folding stock like we just showed you with this one, so it doesn't have a recoil buffer spring like we mentioned. By the way, it has a longer sight radius if you're gonna run irons. Boom. A lot longer than the AR-15, because I don't have BUIS on this, but you know the score, it'd be right here to right here. The Mini-14, heck, it's front sight's clear up there. And in this version of the ranch rifle, it has a folding peep and then you can see this Williams sight that I put on this one. And by the way, I didn't chuck the original one. I kept it. Yeah. This is an awesome sighting Very platform. Cool. And by the way, when you get these, take your hoods off and then paint these flat black in here so there's no reflection in this peep. And once you have that, dude, it's awesome. It, notice I didn't even put optic on that one. Yeah. It's pure iron. So this, this is actually still a GTW tactical carving for us. It's second cool as well but it's a GT gun, even though there's no muzzle device. Now, when I lived in California, guess what my go-to TAC carbine was? Mini 14. Mini. Yeah, Mini 14. It's like a 16.5 inch barrel, no threaded muzzle, Mini 14 with 10 round max, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is still legal in California. Something, something. So it can get the job done uh, with all that. But I wanna focus in this video, and I have been, on second cool, how special it is. There's just something cool about it. So lightweight, and it really was kind of a forerunner uh, in that in that genre. I remember I used to go to that pawn store. Remember that pawn shop there in uh, Utah? We'd go there and had all the guns hanging. Really cool, high-end tactical rifles, like Sig 551s. Five They'd have like a FAMAS hanging up there. What else did they have? Uh, oh, the Steyr Aug. Yeah. They'd have that. All the guns I couldn't afford as a poor college student. No one could, really. I couldn't. I had lusted after them, and so I had to settle for a Mini 14. And you know what? I liked it. I kind of kicked myself that I didn't uh, buy one of those folding stock minis. Yeah. Just for cool. I mean, but I didn't. Uh, but as you can see, the prices on those are all already going up. Now, the Mini 14 has disadvantages. I've covered some of them already. There, it's not a perfect platform. If we talk to First Cool, we've you covered some of them. trade-offs. Because in the end, you're slinging the same round out of this as you are out of this. It's, Only this is less accurate, mm -hmm. harder to reload, harder to operate. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, probably more <coughs> expensive than most of the more affordable ones of these. 800 bucks for like that. 800, almost 900 for that one with the ugly ATI stock. And the ATI stock still doesn't get you to the point of stuff like key mod and the yeah. light. Bear. You make some trade-offs. So I wouldn't say function, like, yeah, you can get the job done with a mini, but you're not going to have as good a time as if you just got your average run-of-the-mill AR. Do you remember our video we did, the special operations mini 14 with yeah. the Troy stock? That was kind of a, you know, kind of an exercise in what if, you know, and what happened is we ended up with 11 and a half pound <laughs> mini 14. I can't believe they made that stock. Uh, it was a fun video, it was a fun experiment, but it, it ultimately it failed. If you're talking first cool, absolute modularity, uh, user adaptability, you're not going to beat the AR-15 system. It's still our go-to two choice. I was going to say a muzzle light stock, but whatever. <laughs> Do you guys even it's the know the weapon that? they used in Terminator 2, so it's got to be good. <laughs> got to be good. Here's some paper from this gun, which by the way, we bought. This is a used Mini-14 that we yeah. bought recently. So. We know a little bit of what we're talking about. So here you're looking at, not just a reviewer, we're still gun enthusiasts, we're still tactical gear enthusiasts. We basically, at this point, have access to any TAC carbine we want, true or false. Anything we want, we can get it. And we live in a great freedom state, we can get it. And lo and behold, you have us as a family searching this gun out, even with all its limitations, and putting it back into inventory. And I say back into inventory because in Minot, North Dakota, you'll like this story, I bought a gun exactly like this. Do you remember that one? Yeah. It was a stainless steel, wood stocked, Mini 14 ranch from Walmart in Minot, North Dakota. 
uh, the good old days. I bought it and I think I paid like $4.59 for it or something. And stupidly, when we moved to Washington State, I sold it. So now, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going full circle and I always regretted selling. I was like, why did I sell that? Wasn't it because it wasn't black and tactical though? I think it's because we were broke. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of money. Too. And so I couldn't afford to hang on to it. I still regret selling it. But here we came first full circle and this is the same gun. It's the same era. What if it's exactly the same gun? Could be. Do, 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 do. Let me show you the paper like we're getting to. Um, the Mini 14, even these older ones, when you take them out to 100 yards, this is kind of what you're going to get. And this is, by the way, was a, with a different scope. I improved the scope. I had a red field 3x9 on it. This is operational in the desert in December. It's not great. Old Billy designed it just to be able to hit a muskrat, no tighter. <laughs> He's like, how big's the muskrat? About 8 inches. <laughs> oh, that's good enough. Well, again, you have a straight, skinny barrel. You have all types, it's not free floated. Definitely not free floated. All types of unusual barrel harmonics going in there. And do, do you guys remember, sorry, I'm working a cold still. Do you guys remember Accuracy Systems? It was in Odessa, Texas. They used to do the heavy barrel modifications on the Mini 14. So a guy would go out and spend like a thousand bucks on a Mini 14. He may or may not get like one MOA. And I actually, I think I talked about this in one of the mini reviews I did years ago. I thought about doing this. This is before I really got into AR-15s, and I was like, ah, I want to really make it accurate. But I, the only thing that held me back is the weight. Because yeah. they put a heavy barrel on it, and then I have like a 10-pound Mini 14. And thankfully, I never spent a dime on that. Get so, to that point, just getting an M1A. They used to have that Mini 14 Target. Remember that? I, I like to hate that thing. It yeah. had like adjustable harmonics or something. It was like uh, Allen screws that you could... No, it was a barrel tune. device that could go back and forth. You could change your barrel harmonics. It wasn't like a muzzle device, right? Am I thinking? I don't know. I you guys know it's it. a Mini 14 Target. I don't think that ever sold very well. I was just well. thought, if you want a heavy-ass Mini 14 and it's 1994, why don't you just buy a Norinco M1A? Didn't they have those back then? That's a good gun, by the way. That would have been awesome. Let me show you some more. But anyways, I want to... There's PMC AE223. And then here's a ranch. Oh, that's this one, the one I just showed that's you. Pretty good. So this is with a red dot at 50 yards. That's not too bad. Yeah. And that's another point I want to talk about if we bounce back to first cool, is that within 50 yards, a mini 14, dude, you're gold. 25 to 50 yards, it, it's awesome. I mean, this is the kind of grouping you're going to get, even with iron sights. So that's this gun right here. And I took it out because this is still a systems gun for us. And it's a home defense gun, and so I wanted to double check, confirm zero. So I lubed it up, maintained it, cleaned it, and then I took it out. And it's actually during shooting that that I, it dawned on me. It's like, man, this Mini 14 thing is going to come full circle. So that's that paper right there. And then this is just 30 yards with this 1992 Mini 14. So 30 good. yards, I mean, honestly, a good AR-15 is shooting that at 100. Yeah. If we're honest, that's this one. The Mini 14, this era with this thin barrel, it sucks for accuracy. We'll call it three to four MOA with good ammo. But again, do you care? Do you care? It's going to be cool. How many guns do we have in our collection that maybe are not super accurate, that maybe aren't mm, tactic cool, that maybe aren't the best choice, and yet you love them so much and you want to fondle it and just go out and shoot it how about a <laughs> is there any arasaka exemplar <laughs> there you go this is a type 44 carbine arasaka without the bayonet assembly on it did you just do a video on this showing it yeah so go to tactical doodles channel and he's going to post a really fun video series on uh, surplus rifles and some of his takes on it and he shows you this rifle what a perfect example though our, you know, this is in our own collection, by the way. We bought this used. We hunted out an Arasaka. I wanted the carbine version forever. This still has a freaking chrysanthemum on it, dudes. So they didn't grind it off. Talking about first cool. So this right here. Usually the Arasakas, people were so pissed off, I guess, that the Japanese, uh, I don't know, the whole situation, they ground them off, right? I think the... The soldiers were instructed to destroy it or deface it because it meant it was the emperor's property. Oh, so if there it was going to fall into enemy hands, they were supposed to do it. So finding an Arasaka with an intact chrysanthemum is doable, but I don't think it's like yeah. 
all the ones you're going to see if you ever see them on your local gun store rack. But is this the most accurate gun in the world? Nope. Is, does it have the most firepower? Nope. Is it the lightest? Nope. And on and on we caliber. go. Six point whatever the hell 6. it is. Six point five by uh, your fifty. It's a special order, no matter what. But this is a good example of what we're talking about, and much better is the Mini Fourteen because it is capable it, it, with its limitations. And now we're turning the corner where second cool comes into being. And I here's my prediction. I could be completely wrong. What's really going to go up in value are Mini 14s exactly like this one. The stainless steel ones, the folding stock GBs like you saw in 18, because how they look. They are gorgeous. They have a second cool appearance. They look really cool. That 30 round magazine. They kind of look like an Italian BM59. Yeah. Remember that gun? They just look cool. They're fast to shoot. They're soft recoiling. They're loud and fun to shoot. They're inexpensive to shoot, a lot better than the Arasaka. That's what's gonna go down. So I would probably, if you have it in mind, start scrubbing your local gun store shelves, maybe go into something like Gun Broker and look what's out there because I think the demand on these older Mini 14s, 1980s, 1990s is gonna go up. Yeah. Stuff like the class three ones too, the AC556 I think is- They're like 40 affordable. grand. It's like 13. I'm, 12, really? 12, 13, I think, yeah, for an AC 5.56. Back then, they used to be kind of, there was that shootout at the H&K factory. The dude used his factory tester oh, you told AC 5.56 yeah. and took out the, it was like some Hells Angels or something that were following him and his girlfriend. Speaking of which, the Mini 14 like. actually has a pretty interesting history in the hands of both good guys and bad guys. Yeah. The Miami shootout comes to mind. I've talked about that on camera before. Uh, once again, proving that it is a very capable weapon system and an under the radar weapon system. But what we're concentrating now, right now, is the enjoyment of shooting it, the enjoyment of putting it back or keeping it in your collection to put a smile on your face. That's all we're talking about. And you have other guns to get more serious th things done with. Um, by the way, speaking of second coal, what is that? Is that a- 1903 right. Mark I. <coughs> 1918 with a repro freaking huge bayonet. That's pretty sick. Let me tilt this up a little bit and you can see it better. Oh, that's better. Gorgeous. Second cool gun. So not every gun we have is about first cool. Be happy, go out, scrub the market for a good mini 14. You may find a deal out there. You may find one for like 400 bucks to this level, which by the way, when I got this, I looked at it. It's like it was never shot. I bet you a lot are that way. There was, was never guys shot, shot for the incoming disaster when the computers were both on <laughs> December 31st, 1999, and the water purification <laughs> systems take a dump on us. It was, and there was no gun rack marks on it. A lot of Mini yeah. 14s rode in gun racks out Sitting here in the, in the West because the they were used as coyote rifles, and literally they're called ranch rifles, but a lot of guys use them yeah. for just that eradicating pests and whatever gophers with it. And then some of us looked at it for, I think, one of its best roles ever, and that's as a family defense tactical carving. But now it's going to have all types of second cool. From the bunker with Tactical Doodle, the Mini 14 still beloved in the Nut and Fancy project for a whole different reason, don't you think? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you later.